Hi everyone. My name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here to read a few picture books to you. The first book that we're going to be reading today is The Art Lesson by Tommy DePaolo. Tommy knew he wanted to be an artist when he grew up. He drew pictures everywhere he went. It was his favorite thing to do. His friends had favorite things to do too. Jack collected all kinds of turtles. Herbie made huge cities in the sandbox. Tommy's Janine, Tommy's best friend, could do cartwheels and stand on her head. But Tommy drew and drew. His twin cousins, who were already grown up, were in art school learning to be real artists. They told him not to copy and to practice, practice, practice. So he did. Tommy put his pictures up on the walls of his half of the bedroom. His mom put them up all over the house. And his dad took them to the barber shop where he worked. Tom and Nana, Tommy's Irish grandfather and grandmother, put his pictures up in their grocery store. And Nana Fall River, his Italian grandma, put one in a special frame on the table next to the photograph of Aunt Chloe in her wedding dress. Once Tommy took a flashlight and a pencil under the covers and drew pictures on his sheets. But when his mom changed the sheets on Monday and found them, she said, no more drawing on the sheets, Tommy. His mom and dad were having a new house built, so Tommy drew pictures of what it would look like when it finished. When the walls were up, one of the carpenters gave Tommy a bright blue piece of chalk. Tommy took the chalk and drew beautiful pictures all over the unfinished walls. But when the painters came, his dad said, that's it, Tommy, no more drawing on the walls. Tommy couldn't wait to go to kindergarten. His brother Joe told him that there was a real art teacher who came to the school to give art lessons. When do we have our art lesson? Tommy asked the kindergarten teacher. Well, you won't have art lessons until next year, said Miss Bird, but we are going to paint pictures tomorrow. It wasn't much fun. The paint was awful and the paper got all wrinkly. Mrs. Bird made the paint by pouring different colored powders into different jars and mixing them with water. The paint didn't stick to the paper very well and it cracked. If it was windy when Tommy carried his picture home, the paint blew right off the paper. At least you get more than one piece of paper in kindergarten, his brother Joe said. When the art teacher comes, you only get one piece. Tommy knew that the art teacher came to the school every other Wednesday. He could tell that she was an artist because she wore a blue smock over her dress and she was always carrying a big box of thick colored chalks. Once Tommy and Janine looked at the drawings that were going up in the hallway, they were done by the first graders. Your pictures are much better, Janine told Tommy. Next year when we have real art lessons, you'll be the best one. Tommy could hardly wait. He practiced all summer. Then on his birthday, which was right after school began, his mom and dad gave him a box of 64 Crayola crayons. Regular boxes of crayons had red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. This box had so many other colors, blue, violet, turquoise, red, orange, pink, and even gold, silver, and copper. Class, said Miss Landers, the first grade teacher, next month the art teacher will come to our room, so on Monday, instead of singing, we will practice using our crayons. On Monday, Tommy brought his 64 crayons to school. Miss Landers was not pleased. Everyone must use the same crayons, she said. School crayons. School crayons only had the same old eight colors. As Miss Landers passed them out to the class, she said, these crayons are school property, so do not break them, peel off the paper, or wear down the points. How am I supposed to practice being an artist with school crayons? Tommy asked Jack and Herbie. That's enough, Tommy, Miss Lander said, and I want you to take those birthday crayons home with you and leave them there. And Joe was right. They only got one piece of paper. Finally, the next, the day of the art lesson came. Tommy could hardly sleep that night. 
The next morning, he hid his box of 64 crayons under his sweater and went off to school. He was ready. The classroom door opened and in walked the art teacher. Miss Landry said, class, this is Mrs. Bowers, the art teacher. Patty, who was our paper monitor this week, will give out one piece of paper to each of you. And remember, don't ruin it because it is the only piece you'll get. Now pay attention to Mrs. Bowers. Class, Mrs. Bowers began, because Thanksgiving is not too far away, we will learn to draw a pilgr pilgrim man, a pilgrim woman, and a turkey. Watch carefully and copy me. Copy? Copy? Tommy knew that real artists didn't copy. This was terrible. This was supposed to be a real art lesson. He folded his arms and just sat there. Now what's the matter, Miss Landers asked. Tommy looked past her and spoke right to Mrs. Bowers. I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, and my cousins told me that real artists don't copy. And besides, Mrs. Landers won't let me use my own 64 Crayola crayons. Well, well, said Mrs. Bowers, what are we going to do? She turned to Miss Landers, and then they whispered together. Miss Landers nodded. Now, Tommy, Mrs. Bowers said, it wouldn't be fair to let you do something different from the rest of the class. But I have an idea. If you draw the pilgrim man and woman in Turkey, and if there's any time left, I'll give you another piece of paper, and you can do your own picture with your own crayons. Can you do that? I'll try, Tommy said with a big smile. And he did. And he did. And he still does. The end. All right, so the next book that we're going to read is called Knuffle Bunny. And it's by Mo Willems. You can see in the end pages, there is a washing machine with Knuffle Bunny in it. You can see pictures. Those are Trixie's parents' wedding and when she was born. She's a baby. And we see Trixie and Knuffle Bunny. Not long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. Trixie and her daddy went down the block, through the park, past the school, and into the laundromat. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry in the machine. I don't know, what do you think? Does that look very helpful? She even got to put the money into the machine and then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Aggle Flaggle Clabble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Aggle Flaggle Clabble, Trixie said again. Blaggle plabble, wumby flappy, snurp. Now please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled. She went boneless. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time that they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. As soon as Trixie's mom opened the door, she asked, where's Knuffle Bunny? The whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park. They zoomed past the school and into the laundry mat. Trixie's daddy looked for Knuffle Bunny and looked and looked and looked. But Knuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's dad decided to look harder and Knuffle Bunny! And those were the first words that Trixie ever said. That's a great book. So we're going to read one more book today and it is called A Fire Engine for Ruthie. This book is by Leslie Newman and illustrated by Sid Moore.
On the first day of Ruthie's visit to her grandmother's house, Ruthie and Nana walked to the grocery store to buy Ruthie's favorite foods. On their way home, they passed Brian's house. Ruthie shields her eyes from the sun to watch Brian playing in his front yard with a fire engine. A red fire engine with a black and white dog sitting up front and a silver ladder that slides up and down and a yellow hose to unwind and a siren that goes, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Do you have a fire engine to play with at your house, Nana? Ruthie asks. No, says Nana, but I have some beautiful dolls waiting for you. Nana opens an old trunk and takes out her dolls and sits them all on the kitchen table. Why don't we have a tea party, she asks Ruthie. Okay, Ruthie says, even though she doesn't really like tea parties. Ruthie pretends to pour some tea for Nana. Then she twitches her nose in the air. Do you smell smoke, she asks Nana. Fire, fire! Ruthie puts all the dolls in the cardboard box and pretends that they're racing around town to put out a fire. But the cardboard box has no black and white dogs sitting up front. The cardboard box has no silver ladder that slides up and down and no yellow hose will unwind. The cardboard box doesn't make any noise at all. On the second day of Ruthie's visit, Ruthie and Nana walk to the library to check out Ruthie's favorite books. On their way home, they pass Brian's house again. Ruthie holds her umbrella with one hand and waves to Brian, who is playing at his front porch with a train, a blue train that has two cars and a little red caboose that go chuka chuka chuka, and the whistle that goes woo woo. Do you have a train to play with at your house, Nana? Ruthie asks. No, says Nana, but I have some lovely dress up clothes waiting for you at home. Nana takes a bag of dress-up clothes out of the closet, spills on the living room couch, and puts on a floppy orange hat and white shoes with high heels and silver clasps. Why don't we have a fashion show, she asks Ruthie. Okay, Ruthie says, even though she doesn't really like fashion shows. Ruthie puts on a pink flowered skirt and purple gloves with pearl buttons, and she cups her hands around her ears. Do you have a train, she asks Nana. Ruthie pulls a fuzzy blanket over her ears and pretends it's an engineer's cap. All aboard, she shouts. Tickets, please. Ruthie pushes some chairs together to make a train. But the chairs don't have wheels that go chuck chuck or a whistle that goes woo woo. On the third day of Ruthie's visit, Ruthie and Nana walk to the playground to swing on Ruthie's favorite swing set. On their way home, they press Brian's house once more. Ruthie holds her hat so it won't blow away and calls out hi to Brian, who is playing in his driveway with a motorcycle. A red motorcycle with shiny handlebars that turn left and right and a bright white headlight that really works, two brown saddlebags to put things in, and a button to press that goes vroom, vroom, vroom. Do you have a motorcycle to play with at your house, Nana? Ruthie asks. No, says Nana, but I have some pretty paints waiting at home for you. Nana takes some jars of paint out of the cabinet and opens them up and gives Ruthie a piece of paper and a paintbrush. Why don't we paint some flowers, she asks Ruthie. Okay, Ruthie says, even though she doesn't really like painting flowers. Ruthie paints a yellow daisy and then looks out the window. Do you see a motorcycle, she asks Nana. Ruthie paints a motorcycle right next to her flower. When Ruthie is done with her painting, Nana gives her a new piece of paper and Ruthie paints another motorcycle. She paints big motorcycles and little motorcycles. They all have shiny handlebars and bright white headlights and brown saddlebags to put things in, but they don't have any buttons to press. They go vroom, vroom, vroom. Ruthie paints lots of pictures and Nana hangs them up to dry all over the house. On the fourth day of Ruthie's visit, Nana looks at all of Ruthie's picture and then she looks at Ruthie. What would you like to do today? She asks Ruthie. Ruthie thinks hard. She thinks about Brian playing with his fire engine. She thinks about Brian playing with his train. And she thinks about Brian playing with his motorcycle. Ruthie tells Nana, I want to play with Brian. When Ruthie arrives at Brian's house, Brian is in his room playing with his toys. Brian takes out the shiny red fire engine. Look, Ruthie, he says, this is where the fire chief sits. Ruthie takes out the long blue train. Look, Brian, she says, this is where the engineer sits. Brian takes out the big red motorcycle. Look, Ruthie, he says, this is where the driver sits. Brian and Ruthie take out cars and trucks and buses and play with them all. 
when Nana comes to take Ruthie home, Ruthie is so busy playing that she doesn't see Nana standing in the doorway. When Nana says, Ruthie, it's time to put everything away, Ruthie is so busy playing that she doesn't even hear her. Nana starts putting Brian's toys away. She picks up the blue train and heads for Brian's toy box. Stop that train! Stop that train! Ruthie calls. I need to go to my Nana's house. Nana looks at the toy in her hand. She kneels down and races the train to Ruthie. Chicka, 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 chicka. Woo, woo! Nana looks at Ruthie. Do you have your ticket? She asks. Yes, I do, said Ruthie. Does this train stop at my Nana's house? It certainly does, says Nana. All aboard. Taxi, taxi, Brian calls. Nana looks around and sees a yellow taxi. Beep, beep. She races the car over Brian. to Brian. Did you call a taxi, she asks. Yes, I did, said Brian. I need to go to Market Street right away. Hop in, says Nana. Ruthie and Nana and Brian play with tow trucks and moving vans and cement mixers. They play with dump trucks and school buses and tractor trailers. When Brian's mother comes upstairs, Ruthie, Nana, and Brian are so busy playing that they don't see her sitting in the doorway. When Brian's mother says, it's time to put everything away, Ruthie and Nana and Brian are so busy playing that they don't even hear her. On the last day of Ruthie's visit, Ruthie and Nana walk to the toy shop to buy their favorite toys. Nana buys a fire engine for Ruthie, a train for herself, and two motorcycles to share. And that's the end of that book. Those were all the books that we're going to read for story time today. Thank you for joining me. Once again, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for a few more books. Bye!